Let's unpack those market movements with Joseph Busher from JM Bush Investment Group. Uh, a very good afternoon to you, uh, Mr. Busher. Uh, let's start with uh, the overall market. I mentioned in my intro there that uh, the JSC 0.6% uh, in the green to end off the trading day. Uh, some nice support coming through from the industrial stocks as well as the financials. Uh, what were some of the other big catalysts on the day? So certainly, I think you see that uh, you know we two thirds up uh, you know on the overall market, but certainly driven as you put it by industrials, financials, the small cap stock, uh, the energy sector also above one percent, oil and gas above two percent, and we have the two uh, big weights on the JSC, NASPAS and process NASPAS up three percent. So certainly that drove the market to to being up. Over you know, the last three weeks or so, investors will certainly be very happy with market performance. Uh, the overall index up uh, now to about 78,000 uh, index level. Remember, we were coming down to about 76, and the market was very nervous when the rand also was drawing towards uh, 20 rand per US dollar. So any investor at this particular time would be very happy, both uh, with the equity markets, uh, capital markets, and certainly the rand, although today is slightly weaker and off the best levels of the day. Mm. And how are investors or market participants, Mr. Busher, digesting um, what came out of the U.S. Federal Reserve, but also what came out of the European Central Banks, uh, them hiking interest rates? And uh, I mean, was this expected from the ECB, but also the tone that both these big central banks have set when it comes to the uh, rate hiking or not cycle going forward? For borrowers, certainly in the U.S. and I guess in South Africa, if we do follow suit to the Fed, is that they kept the rates uh, on hold, which mm. is always, uh, you know, good for borrowers. But I think, you know, if look in terms of ECB, they went the opposite, increasing rates by 25 basis points. Uh, that could basically uh, say to us as well, when our own central bank, reserve bank, look at the rates next, uh, you know, whether they will increase by 0.5. Um, uh, percent or 50 basis points or 25 basis points. But I think it's a breather in particular for home loan owners or people who have debt um, and it might not be good for investors because investors obviously want more, the higher the risk they have, the better for their investments. Uh, but I think for net borrowers, uh, they will be very happy, uh, you know, given also, uh, you know, the rent importers will also be happy that the rent is kind of holding, uh, you know, uh, is uh, uh, weakness uh, or weak trend we have seen over the last two weeks. Mm, what investors want, definitely here on the local front as well, Mr. Boshe, is for the likes of PPC uh, to stage some sort of a turnaround. Uh, they released their trading statement today and they're lamenting the um, laggard kind of um, pace at which government is putting through this infrastructure program. And until that's done, the likes of PPC are continuing uh, to uh, suffer as they have communicated in their trading statement today. Given our challenges, I think government doesn't come back with uh, massive infrastructure development we saw over the last uh, few decades. But I think they look to say SA is a little bit struggling. Uh, Zimbabwe volumes are down, although, you know, they cost a little bit of some profits. So they have reduced or improved their loss position, uh, which is always good because I think, you know, they have struggled, I think, since what, uh, 2015, for a very long time, I think PPC have been um, uh, struggling, but they see some improvements a little bit in, in, in Rwanda. And as I said to you, in Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwean unit, PPC Zimbabwe, is debt free uh, and they paid dividends actually of 167 million or about $9 million uh, from about $6 million uh, in the previous uh, report. So, so I think there's some improvements there, and uh, shareholders will be happy that, you know, one of the darlings of SA within the uh, construction sector, which is really a feeder into construction sector, um, is starting to show some positive signs. Mm, and that, of course, despite the slowness of government. Mr. Busher, let's talk about uh, the national health insurance. Uh, that being signed, put through Parliament. A lot of private health care providers, medical schemes raising major concerns about this. Why are they so concerned about the NHI and perhaps what it would do to their businesses? It will eat into their profits, and, and I think this is long overdue for government, and I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, you know, if you look in terms of countries that have done well, Botswana, say, for example, they implemented basically their own uh, type of uh, uh, transformational 
government policies that have helped Botswana to be where it is. You know, I was just going to say on the mining, the share uh, with the BS 50, 50 on revenue, they had an NHI policy, and you can see how strong, obviously, Botswana's system is. So, so I think the disquietness or unhappiness by uh, South African private sector uh, operators that this will eat into their profits if government starts uh, basically providing medical aid uh, type of uh, uh, solutions. Government is the biggest employer. Uh, and I think if the unions were to work with government to make sure that uh, you know, all South Africans uh, have got access to reasonable quality uh, medical care, uh, they would basically go for, for government. But I think private sector is then mentioning things like uh, inefficiency of government, mm. is talking about inefficiencies in terms of corruption. But I think all those things really is to protect their tough uh, because then you know they have to compete with government. Uh, the biggest challenge in SA is that uh, you know the private sector sees government purely as a policy maker or uh, just creating an enabling environment for business, not big government to uh, uh, you know, participate. But I think government has got a responsibility to provide basic social services to the people of South Africa. And, and that's all it is. They're basically complaining about their profits. Mm, absolutely. Thank you, as always, Mr. Busher, for your time this evening. That is uh, Joseph Busher from J.M. Busher Investment Group. And that's all